if you will, to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, and if you'll go to chapter 2 and look at verse... Now I am echoing real bad, Jamal. Um, look at verse 8 and 9 of Ephesians chapter 2. Say amen when you found that. Amen. Put on your happy face. <laughs> Some of you are struggling. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. Should be a very familiar verse to you. You've heard it many, many times. But I feel like it's a verse the Lord wants us to look at this morning and, and just to understand it. So are you there? All right, look what the Bible says. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Let me just read that to you again quickly. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Let me pray with you real quick. Father, thank you again so much for this day. Thank you for the time we've already had together in, in Sunday school this morning, and thank you for the worship service. And Father, I pray now as we look at your word uh, that you'd give us understanding. You'd give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, we're thankful uh, for Brother Nick and for this day that's so special for all of us and him with this baptism. I pray that your hand would just be on the service and that you'd just bless this time together. And uh, Father, thank you for loving us. And thank you for making salvation such an easy thing. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about for just a few minutes this morning, because I'm so excited to get Nick under that water. But for just a few minutes, I want you to listen to me, okay? And I'll call your name. No, I won't. Um, just listen to me. Salvation is, is the easiest thing in the world to do. But it's, it's the most, comp we have made it the most complicated thing in the world. The world has made it the most complicated thing. If we can flip on a TV, because all of us are going to have that place in our life, a time in our life, when Jesus is going to knock on the door of our heart. We're all going to have that place in our life where we're going to have conviction about the things that are in our life. We're all going to come to that place that we realize something is not right between us and God. Sometimes we wait till the very end of life. You have procrastinators that say, one day I'm going to get to this, I'm going to do this. Here's the problem with that, friend. Listen to me. You have no idea how much time you have left on this earth. You have no idea if you're going to make it to this afternoon, man. This is not, salvation is not something you put off for another day. The Apostle Paul said this. He said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts like the children in the wilderness, for they perished out there. He said, but today is the day of salvation. Every, every time that the Holy Spirit knocks on the door of your heart one more time, Friend, eventually you're not going to have an opportunity to open that door. Eventually you're going to come to a life is just going to be over. Time will be no more. So, but here's what frustrates me as, as, as a preacher, as a saved person, as somebody that 20 years ago I asked God, I was like, can I spend the rest of my life? I was so thankful when he saved me. I wasn't looking for God when he saved me. I didn't want God when he saved me. God just kind of interrupted my life. Amen? God just kind of made me have a wreck in life. And stop me long enough to have to listen to him. And listen, what I found with him was what I've been looking for my whole life. I just wanted, are you like me at all? I just wanted peace in my life, man. I was 27 years old and just chasing life with everything in me. And I just, I just wanted some peace. I didn't even really know what love was until I met him. But when he saved me, I remember praying this prayer, and I, and I felt bad, Brother Ron, because all of my life I thought preachers were lazy people, and if you, were, if you was going to go be a preacher, that just meant you didn't want to have a real job, amen? You didn't want to work. Little did I know the, all that comes with being a preacher. And so I felt kind of bad about the prayer, but I remember praying, God, I don't want you to think I'm being lazy, but if you would let me, if there's any way, I would really like to spend the rest of my life trying to tell other people how to get saved. And God made that possible for me. Almost 20 years now, he's allowed me to tell other people how to get saved. I remember some of the seminary professors in Jacksonville uh, as they came to our church for a conference that I was preaching. And I remember one of those seminary professors saying, and he didn't know I could hear it, Nick. And he's walking off. He's like, he's like, Brother Donnie just preaches. There's no depth to his preaching. He's just not deep. You know, once you go to seminary, all of a sudden you become a very deep, deep preacher. Well, here's my answer to that. And I did respond to him and let him know that I heard what he said. My answer to that is, is we're not living in a time that we can afford to make the, the gospel complicated. 
We live in a time that, hey, we need to hurry up and get it out there, and it's super, super simple. God didn't make it hard. Thank you, Lord, that he didn't make it hard. He didn't say, hey, if you'll do this and this and this, and you'll keep doing But listen, by it's innate in us. We all have that part of us that want to do some kind of work. You know what I mean? Like, surely there's something I have to do. Surely, surely I should be doing this, this, and this. And if I'm not doing all that, he's not going to save me. Hey, if you believe that, you've already messed up your theology right off the bat. It's not just us. It's always been this way. Even in the, in the, in the Bible times, God gave us the Ten Commandments. They were just Ten Commandments. They're not simple, are they? They're hard. But he just gave us ten. But here's what the, the, the church people did, if you wanted, of that time, the people that hung out in the church. They, the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were running everything, they wrote books and books and books and books on how to obey the Ten Commandments. That's where you see all this craziness of law. And they're like, okay, yeah, you should love the Lord with God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. And here's 58 different ways that you need to do every day so that you make sure that you're loving the Lord your God. They just made it so complicated. And here's what Jesus said when he came on the scene. They probably were thinking, you should be very proud of us. We, we've made sure that we got it. I mean, they know. We have laid it out. We've wrote books and books and books. Jesus looks at them and then turns to the crowd and says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You know what he said to the Pharisees and Sadducees? He said, you have put so much on their backs, you are breaking their backs. You say, well, Donnie, well, I don't think we do that anymore. Well, work with me for a split second. Sometimes I see the church more concerned about teaching people how to be church members. This won't be very popular. So just say amen a couple times, I'll move on. Then we are introducing them to Jesus. Our only responsibility has always been to introduce people to Jesus. If we're going to sit here and try to make professional church members and teach people how to sit and how to speak and how to look and everything else, you know what I mean? Jesus would have done the same thing to us. In many churches, he would have walked in and said, you know what? Never mind, Joe. Come to me, all of you that are weary and broken and hurting. And you don't want to have to try to become all of this. Come to me and I will give you rest. Anytime you sit there and try to do all these different works so that you feel like you'll get God's favor, you're no longer in a relationship with God. You're just religious. Say amen, just a couple of them, man, I'll get you through this. That's, that's religion. Religion's horrible, man. Religion's ugly. Religion is what the American church really became for a long freak. And I think now that everybody's, the young pastors are like, can we get out of that? Can we just start introducing people to Jesus again? Can we just tell them that God loves them and that, hey, God's not concerned about where you're at right now in your life, how messed up you are right now in your life? You know the whole reason you got to get saved is because you're messed up and he knows you're messed up? Did you know that after you get saved, you're still messed up? Yes or no? You're still messed up, amen? Y'all wanna, I don't think we all want to come out here and derp, dump our dirty laundry in the floor, amen? Your pastor is still extremely messed up. Brother Mike is still extremely messed up. You're still extremely messed up. Why are we saved then? Just because of him. It was never because me and you were able to do something to achieve something. We're only going to say because God gave us grace. That God said, you know what? I love them. I'm going to show them grace. I'm going to forgive them. But religion says, no, you can do that. You can work. You can do more. You can do more. You can do more. Jesus never laid things on us to do. He simply said this. He said, follow me and I will make you into some things. He said, if you'll follow me, then, then things will change in your life. But not because you'll jump on there and start working, but you'll just be following me. And as you follow me, you'll start to love the things I love. You'll start to have the thoughts of things that I think about. Just as we follow, God doesn't want religion. He didn't like it in the Old, in the Old Testament, New Testament. He doesn't like it now. God wants relationship. Say yes right there. He wants to have a relationship. Hey, strip back all the works and everything you could do and just say, he just wants to have a relationship with me. He just wants to have a relationship with me. That's what Jesus said when he came on the scene. He said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Now, for many years I've heard preachers, and I'm not knocking it, I ain't mad about it, but I've heard preachers say that they always refer to that as fallen mankind and that God wants to get all the lost people and get them saved. But Jesus, listen how he said this, and I'm quoting. He said, he had come to seek and to save that which was lost something was lost somewhere 
And Jesus said, I'm here to seek and to save that which was lost. And so you go back to the very first book of the Bible to figure out what was lost. They used to, Adam and Eve would walk with God every day in the garden. They would talk with God. They were in a relationship with God. And then sin entered into the picture. And when sin entered into the picture, God had to kick Adam and Eve out of the garden. He had to kick them out of the place where they could walk and talk with him anymore. And he put up garden flaming swords to guard the way. And the Bible says by chapter 4, then men began to cry out to God. Because they began to realize that, hey, we're not in relationship anymore with God. So when Jesus said he's come to seek and to save that which is lost, he's saying, I came to seek and to save the relationship that was torn apart. We're not, we're not born in relationship with God anymore. We're born separated from God. And when you get to the place that you want to be saved and you, feel, and you know that God is, is leaning in and talking to you and you need to be saved, think about it this way. You're simply going to go back into relationship with God. You're going to have a relationship with God. And that's all that it is. It's so simple. It's not all the things you... I could turn 50 different Christian channels on TV this afternoon... And I would hear 50 different ways pretty much of what it takes to be saved. There was a jailer in the book of Acts that he saw, he didn't see God, but he saw God working in two people. Paul and Silas were locked up in chains, in prison, in the center of the prison with their heads through whatever those things were called in their arms. And they're just sitting there and everybody's like, wow, man, they must have done something horrible. This is bad. You would think that they would have been, all we were doing was preaching God and now you've got us locked up in the middle of the prison. But it says like at midnight, this jailer that was watching them said they began singing spiritual songs. They started broke out in a worship service. Hello? With their head and arms stuck in that thing. They broke out in a worship service. And then all of a sudden the, the prisons rattled and gates came open and prisoners could have fled everywhere. No one left. And the jailer that saw all of this looked at Paul and Silas and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There was the question right there. They're like, I don't know what this is, but I need this. Amen. I need to be able to be in a really bad time in life and still be able to sing praises to God. I need this in my life. And they're like, simple, very simple. They said, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Doesn't get much simpler than that. They didn't say, now you get in that church house, amen, ain't nothing wrong with going to church. I believe you ought to go to church, amen, so don't misconstrue what I'm saying. But they didn't lay out this list of that you make sure you're at church, you make sure you don't miss church, you make sure you're at this, you make sure this, this, this. He didn't lay all that. He said, hey, believe in Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's what Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us, isn't it? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that means, simply means that, yes, I believe Jesus is Jesus. And you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. How easy is that? I say easy, and yet there's three quarters of the world that'll never find that. Even though it's open to all of us, you know what I'm saying? Romans 10, 13, for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody in this room, anybody in this world that has a day that they say, Jesus, I believe in you and I want you to save me, you're saved. Isn't there that part of us in the inside, though, that says, well, shouldn't I have to do something else, though? There should be some more to do. Should I have to? There's nothing else. You. you couldn't change it if you wanted to. It wasn't anything to do with you. You never, you never did something to get saved. Let me give you just a couple of verses real quick. And I just, I just, before baptism, I just want us to understand these things. For by grace have you been saved. What does that mean? You were never even looking to get saved. The only reason you ever drew to him is because he drew to you. If he would not have drawn himself to you, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to unto me. If he wouldn't have done that that day, you'd still be as lost as a goose. You'd still be walking around talking about, I think I'll be all right, amen. I don't think I need any help. But no, there was a day that he opened up your eyes and it was clear to you that, hey, hey, I need you. I need to be saved. The Bible says we love him because we're just great people at loving people. You know what the Bible says? We love him because he first loved us. If he would not have loved us enough to interrupt our life, we would not love him. Friend, if we, couldn't, if we didn't have what it took to get saved before we got saved, we don't have, any, we don't have ability to hold on to something. Amen? We didn't, come, we didn't become perfected. 
Man, I don't know how many preaching messages I've preached over the years where somebody got saved in revival and called me the next week and be like, Brother Donnie, I just think you probably need to do it again because, man, I've been cussing all week. And I, hey, man, you weren't able to fix it before you got saved. You're not going to fix it after you got saved. Here's all you need to do. Follow him. Just follow him. He'll make corrections and changes as you follow him. Just commit to saying, God, I'm just going to walk with you all the days of my life. And, and it's going to be embarrassing, God, because I'm a pretty jacked up human being. But I'm going to walk with you. You know, I used to pray when I was a young preacher. I'd be like, God, and please, you know, please walk with me today. And then one day I kind of woke up, Nick. I was like, no, don't walk with me. I'll take you to some really bad places. Maybe I should walk with you. Let me walk with you, God. For by grace you've been saved through faith. What does that mean? It just means that simply, if, if he wouldn't have given you the ability to believe, and by the way, he gave it to everybody, he gave us the ability to believe. People say, you know what, do you, do you, Donnie, do you really believe that a whale swallowed Jonah? Friend, I believe the Bible. If it said that Jonah swallowed the whale, I'm down for it, amen? amen. I'd be like, man, that's a big old boy could swallow that whale. But I believe it because it's the Bible. He gave me the ability to believe, though. I, that wasn't until I was 27 years old. I went a lifetime with the Bible making zero sense to me. And by the way, don't get frustrated with yourself. He, you, that's a process of learning and walking with him, and he'll open up different scriptures. If it's something you don't need that day, then you might not understand that scripture. Amen? You don't need it that day. If it's something you believe you've understood for years, you may open it one day and be like, I never saw that, man. I just saw something. That's because God is having a relationship with you as you read the word of God. There was a years and years I was like, this just makes zero sense. And then I got saved, and Rosalind, it jumped off the page. Probably because I was going to be a preacher, and I was going to be a preacher very soon after I got saved. So he didn't have a lot of time to work with me, you know what I mean? He's like, I just need to dump it all on you, Donnie. But it jumped off the pages. It made sense to me for the first time. For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You didn't do anything. Wouldn't you like to walk in and be like, oh, yeah, I did something. And God's like, no, you didn't do anything. You simply believed. I told you that I so loved you that I sent my only begotten son to die on a cross, and you simply believed, and I saved you. But he said, it's not of yourselves. It is the gift of who? God. For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that out of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You know what the Bible says about that gift? It says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He's like, Donnie, does that mean don't say it out loud? Like, shh, don't talk about it. No, it said that there's no words to describe the gift that he gave you. Think about that for a second. Man, you're going to bust hell wide open, amen? Deservingly. You say, well, I don't know, man. I thought that I was pretty good in life. Hey, one sin is all it takes to bust hell wide open, amen? And all of us have one. I've, I've talked to young people before in youth groups. I'm going to go preach to youth groups this next weekend um, in Lufkin. I've, I've talked to them, and they're like, you know, Donnie, I just, I just feel like I'm not a bad person, man. I'm not a bad person. I'm like, so, so you've never fibbed to your parents ever? Not one time have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah, I mean, I probably told a lie somewhere in there. And at school, you, you never took something that you weren't supposed to take. Maybe it was a pencil you weren't supposed to, and you put it in your bag and and they're like, well, yeah, I probably took some. So you lying thief, amen? What, where did you think you'd, you're a lying, stealing? Where did you think was going to happen? Every one of us need Jesus. But it's not of works. We can't do anything to deserve what he did. For, it's just grace. There's a two-part recipe to salvation. Grace and faith. His part was the grace. Your part was the faith. God did something for you, you said, I believe that. I believe that you did. Listen to me, because you say, well, Donnie, wouldn't everybody be saved then? You'd be surprised how many people say, you know what, I don't believe. It's weird to us as, as saved people, be like, how could you not believe? But there's people that say, you know what, I, I, I don't believe. I don't believe that Jesus died on a cross and he was buried and he rose again. I think he was probably a good person and a good man, but I don't think he was who he says he was. Here's what the Bible says. He that believes, lean in right here, I'm almost done with you. He that believes is not condemned. Amen. Now, every one of us in this room should be condemned. Oh, yeah. But Jesus said, he that believes is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Man, those are strong verses. 
Jesus said this. He said, he that has the son, Jesus, has life. And he that hath not the son hath not life. Friends, somebody told me one time, and then I'm pretty much done right here. I'm ready to do the baptism. baptism. Somebody pretty much told me one time, they're like, Donnie, what if, what if you, we, this thing ends and you die and you were wrong about all this? And there was no heaven. There was no God. Then you know what? I've, I've still enjoyed this life. But I turned around and, and looked at them, Kevin, is like, but what if you're wrong? What if you act like there is no God and no heaven and you die and everything isn't what God said it was? You're eternally in damnation. So I, want us, I just wanted us to understand that, hey, me and you didn't do anything to be able to get saved. Amen. God didn't look at Donnie and be like, well, that would be a good one right there, man. I should get him. You know what I mean? God didn't do that. God offered it to the whole world. It's still offered to the whole world until that time that he comes back, and then that offer's off the table. There is no, I'm going to talk to Jesus about it when I get up there and see if we can work things out. You're not talking to anybody and working anything out. The Bible says in the Old Testament it refers to us as trees. And it says when you're chopping down a tree, and by the way, the New Testament said the axe is already at the root. But the Old Testament said as the tree falleth, so shall it lie. If it falls dead, it remains dead. Everybody get what we're saying? For by grace, thank you, Lord, you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It was a gift that God gave you, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know what? We, if, we, if it was of works, we'd be running around with our chest all puffed up, wouldn't we? Boy, I wish you could have got saved, but you obviously didn't have what it took. Amen. You're not like me. Boy, I got in there. I got saved. You know what I mean? I, I am somebody. God's like the most level ground in the world is the foot of the cross. We all come the same way. Messed up, broken individuals that believed. And when we believed, he saved us. Amen. Does everybody understand? Let me pray with you. Then I think Brother Robert's going to come and, and play some music for us. Me and Nick are going to make our way up to the baptistry. Amen. So you hang out in here so you can see the, the Duncan, uh, the baptistry. Father, thank you so much for this day. And again, thank you. What a day to celebrate. Thank you for grace. Thank you that you gave us the ability to have faith and to believe. And thank you that you didn't make it complicated and that you didn't, you didn't list all these things we would have to do to get saved. You simply said that we would have to believe that Jesus was who he said he was, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose on the third day. And you saved us. Father, thank you so much for that. We love you so much. And we ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so me and Nick are going to make our way. Um, were you going to get the, did you want to bring any of the kiddos? I didn't know who. Okay. If we're not out in 10 minutes, Phil, come check on us, okay? Have you ever been up here? This is the most old school layout, man. This is wild. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Then you, I, the first time I walked around this corner, I was like, good grief, man. You couldn't have no fat preacher in here. Okay, so there's where we're headed. Okay. And the water's nice and warm. And then in here, you can use this second one or whatever, and I'll use this first one. I just have to put these waders and stuff on. Okay. I put your bag in there. You see it? Yeah. Okay. And I guess there was towels in here, Nick. I didn't. Okay, nice. So all I'm wearing is what I brought. Yeah, yeah, shorts and shirt. Waiters weigh about 400. 